Hey, good afternoon, Hack the Hollow. Uh, it's Mr. Regini, and I'm going to take you through a virtual coding session today using Tinkercad circuits. The great thing about it is that we don't need any hardware, and we can assemble virtual electronics, as well as write some code and even simulate that code. So what I'm going to do is get you used to this environment if you haven't used it before, and uh, we'll get to our first project. So in here, uh, the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is basically put some electronics together. And if it's hidden, it's hiding right here. This is our components list. Now, admittedly, we do have some limitations on the uh, types of things that we want to bring in. But for the most part, we're going to be able to build some really um, basic circuits, learn some code, and uh, still be really active while we're here at home. So let's get into it. You should notice here that you're able to pull down the different types of components that you're looking for. Now you got to be careful. I like to use the components piece because they don't have any pre-programmed code in them. Whereas the starters are all either going to be put together already or have some sort of baseline of code. So I want to stick with the all at the moment and I am going to look for an Arduino because that is our microcontroller of choice at Hack the Hollow. So I'm going to bring that guy right on in here. and if I'm going to hook something up to my Arduino, I am also going to need a breadboard. And you can see that I get different sized versions of breadboards and I'm going to bring a small breadboard into my picture by clicking and dragging. Now I'm going to zoom out slightly so that I can reposition some of these guys a little bit. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a power and a ground bus. So in order to use jumper wires in this, um, you simply click on the thing you want to connect to and then drag on over and plug it in. So if I click 5 volts and start to come away from it, you'll see that it makes a nice jumper wire for me. And I can go directly over to power. Now for me, I like it to look a little neater because otherwise these lines can kind of get all over the place. So if I double click somewhere on that line, it gives me a joint which I can then snap into place. And if I wanted to, I could even change the color of my wire, which in real life, it doesn't matter either. But if we want to try to keep things neat and clean, um, we're going to do that here. So if we have ourselves now a power bus, let's go ahead and create a ground bus as well. Now I'm going to come right over here because this is the closest ground to where I'm working. And I'm going to come over there and make a ground, a little joint with a double click and I'm going to change that color to black. You should keep in mind that you can go to any ground on the Arduino. There is one up here on the digital rail and there are also two others down here on the power rail. So now I've got a connection point for me to plug in power and ground and the next piece that I want to work on is adding some components to my breadboard. So over here we're going to start with something really simple. We're just going to go find ourselves an LED and I'm going to bring that on over to my breadboard. Now, I'll notice that it will label for me the anode, which is the positive bent leg that we've been using in class, and the cathode, which is the straight negative leg. And I could even come over here and toggle the colors to be anything that I want. So in this case, I'm just going to stick with red, because why not? And let's see if we can close a circuit. So what we will do is we're going to come over here, and I'm going to connect that positive anode to the power supply. And just to keep the convention the same, I'm going to make it red. Now if you remember, you need a current limiting resistor when you're using LEDs, otherwise you're going to get to see that magic smoke that we've uh, talked about. So in order to do that, I'm going to come over to my components list and I'm going to look for a resistor. And here it is. Now I can bring this resistor right over here and hook it directly into my ground line and I even can modify the value of that resistor. So for our purposes, we typically use a 220 ohm resistor when connecting an LED. And you'll notice it even changes the colored stripes on that resistor, which is going to allow us in real life to tell the resistance of it. So at this point, we should have a closed circuit, no code needed, just to sort of see if we can operate within the Tinkercad environment. And now if we hit Start Simulation, our light comes on. And if yours did not, you might have made a mistake. So take a look at your wiring and make sure things are plugged in the way they ought to be. So 
in general here, that's going to be how you go ahead and find the components that we talk about. Now there are some things you can do with some of these components. So for example, let's say I wanted to bring this resistor over here, but I wanted to turn it. I could come up to the top and click this, and I get these incremental changes of 15 degrees every time I go ahead and make a click. So if you must, you can certainly rotate things um, in order to make them fit on your breadboard, which is something you might have to do as we begin to make these a little bit more complicated. So in general, that's how we make a circuit, and um, we'll come back now with a little bit of code. All right, so now that we're able to build the circuit, maybe we should try some code. So you'll see here that I've put three LEDs onto the board, one red, one yellow, and one green. I've also included the appropriate 220 ohm resistors. And now I'm going to show you how to basically start to control them. So just the way we did in our club, we're gonna take the red wire out of the power and get rid of that rail. And we're gonna connect it into a digital pin, which is going to give us the ability to talk to the LED and tell it when we want it on and when we want it off. So I've chosen digital pin six, however you can choose any of the digital pins that you'd like with the exception of zero and one because as we learned in real life, they don't really behave very well. So now with this in place, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click code. And here I'm gonna get a little IDE, almost similar to what we had in Arduino. And I'm going to type the exact same way I used to. So up here on line three, I'm gonna create an integer called red LED and I'm gonna set it equal to six where I've plugged in my jumper wire. In the void setup, I'm going to initiate my hardware. So I'm gonna open up the serial port in the event I need it because they do give us a serial monitor here. And I'm gonna select the pin mode of my digital pin which is going to be an output because I'm gonna be turning something on and off in the real world. And in our void loop, we have a really simple blink sketch which is going to write the LED on wait one second, turn the LED off, and wait one second. So if we now go ahead and we simulate this code, and we can hide the code while it's working, I can see that my red LED is turning on and off, which is pretty darn cool considering this is in virtual. So your first challenge is going to be to set up your green and yellow LEDs to different digital pins of your choosing, and create for yourself a virtual stoplight, which is one of our very first challenges in Hack the Hollow. If you can, create a screen recording of your code in action and post it to the Flipgrid dashboard that we've created to share our work from home.